All right, folks, Technivorous here. Today we are pitting these two printers against each other and printing some models. We're going to see which one does better on a lot of different categories. So on the left, you have the Ender 3 V2. On the right is the Artillery Genius. And you can see the models that we've been printing this week. We did some live streams printing each of these, and now we have some results. So let's jump over and take a look and see which one came out better. Hey folks, Technivorous here. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, but stick around because today we're going to be talking about some pretty interesting stuff I don't think you're going to want to miss. Alright, a quick note about our settings today. The point of this video is to compare these two printers and see which is better for ease of use. And that means plug and play ability and the ability to just plug the printer in, type in as few settings as possible in Kira and get a decent print. So we are using pretty basic settings and a generic profile. It is going to be a 0.16 millimeter layer height, three walls for the line count, and you're going to have pretty simple settings. I didn't even open up most of the extra settings in here. So our print speed is running at 55 for the multi-test. It was at 100 for the engine test, so we were testing some higher speeds there. And I will say this, the Artillery Genius did print a lot faster at the same speed settings than the Ender 3 V2 did. But whether or not that's a positive thing, I guess, remains to be seen. You'll see more on that later in the video. So cooling settings, we are printing white PLA on both, so obviously the fan is on. And now that we've discussed our settings, let's discuss our models. Now, these are the two models I chose. We did an engine benchmark test and a 3D printer test. This is the small version of a multi-function test. So there are lots of different things we're going to be looking at here and comparing on the two models. But the important thing to note is, as I said a moment ago when looking at Kira, those settings are going to be the same for both of these printers. And that is going to lead to some interesting differences, notably in the one setting I didn't alter between the two and probably should have, which is retraction. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more when we discuss this machine. Let's jump over to the other machine and compare these two overhang tests and see how they both came out. And here we can see the overhangs printed pretty nicely on both machines. Again, on the left is going to be the Ender 3. We're going to go around, ahead and flip these around to the back because we're looking for where it starts to deviate under here. That's where it's unable to support its own weight. And this model actually looks like it's done a really, really good job. I don't see any looseness or hanging on the 10 degree change, although there is a little bit on the 15 degree change here, and that is right around the steepest angle between 60 and 75. Um, we don't really notice that as bad on this one, but it's still there. And in fact, the variation does continue down all the way down to 45 degrees. So you get a little bit more even loss on this one as the angle increases but you're going to need support at around 45. The Ender 3 is good up to about 60 so anything below that I think you're probably going to be okay. Prints a little bit better at that 45 degree angle than the Genius did. So while we're looking at these models we have a lot of things to compare. Basically they are multi-print tests. You can see some stringing here. That is a result of the retraction as I said uh, the Artillery Genius is a direct drive machine, so I had retraction set. Um, you don't necessarily need it set as high as you would with a Bowden machine like the Ender 3. Um, it does look a little worse up here in the top. So but there are other things that we need to look at here. So let's jump over to some pictures that I took to get a closer look at these fine details. All right, so let's discuss. Here you see both of our models. Again, the Ender 3 V2 is on the left. The Genius is on the right. Now we are looking in this picture at the bridging capabilities and as you can see they both came out decent but on the Genius model on the right there is a little bit of droopage in the second longest and if you look back just a little bit behind that there is a little bit of blobbing in the corner where the bridge meets its pillar as well and you don't see any of that distortion on the Ender 3 version. So the next thing we're going to take a look at here is the circular shapes right here. Now these are inner and outer diameter tests. And on the Ender 3, they came out pretty much flawless, nice and round, and it worked out really well. Again, when we look at the Genius model, we start to see this. Now, this may look like a trick of the light, but in fact, this bottom perimeter of the right circle that is encapsulated with the red here, 
that is a little bit thicker than the rest of the walls, which is a deviation and a flaw in the print as far as perimeters and dimensions go. You'll also note now looking back up in the bridging here on this Genius model, there is a little bit of stringing and droopage from the second shortest of the bridges, so that's not really ideal either. And the next thing that we're going to take a look at and final thing is the stringing. And on the left you can see the pillars for the Ender 3 had a little bit of wispy strings coming off just one pillar there. If you look on the right you see that there is quite a bit of stringing on the pillars from the Artillery Genius. Now this is most likely the biggest artifact of us not changing that retraction setting and that's why we're getting these because as I said the Artillery Genius is a direct drive machine. Well, so the Ender 3 thoroughly kicked the Artillery's butt in that model. Well, how about printing a print-in-place model with moving parts? Here we have our two engine benchmark tests. On the left, you can see the Ender 3 version did do a little singeing or burning of the filament in that area when printing a small feature. Other than that, this one came out pretty well. I mean, those are pretty steep overhangs on those pistons. It's pretty much printing in midair. Um, and the artillery version, unfortunately, because we used horizontal expansion to make sure that the parts didn't fuse together uh, in the negative, we made them a little too thin and the pistons popped right off when I tried to loosen this one up. So, and you can see in the live video that I was really gentle trying to free both of these mechanisms and this one did not work and this one did. And unfortunately, um, that's kind of the death knell for the Artillery Genius. I, it's a great printer, but in this case, um, the Ender 3 V2 is way more plug and play and just kind of ready to go. If you had put in generic settings, you're going to get a decent print. And that's not to say that the Artillery Genius is not a great machine. With a couple more settings, uh, tweaks, and things like that, minor adjustments, this would be a epic print. In fact, I have a profile for the Artillery Genius that is just as much in-depth setup as my profile for the Ender 3 V2. And in that profile, you see a little changes here and there but the overall result comes out a lot better than just a generic plug and play profile. But for the new user who is getting a brand new printer for the first time, I definitely have to recommend the Ender 3 V2 for ease of use. It's gonna be pretty much plug and play. You hook it up, the settings are going to work for you. You might have to make a few minor adjustments, but mostly just to level your bed to get the thing printing, so. I have links to both these printers down below, and I can't stress enough, they are both great printers. There are things about the Artillery Genius that I love that the Ender 3 V2 just doesn't do for me, but like I said, we are going for ease of use today, and the results speak for themselves. That's going to be it. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. Stick around guys, I got another YouTube recommended video for you right here, and if you haven't already, subscribe, 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 make sure that you smash that like button. We'll see you in the next one, Technivorous out.